So welcome to the Get Up and Dad podcast, the show where we interview hardworking parents, anything from a super, super, super tech dad to a busy business mommy blogger. Let's get up and Today we have on the show the legend Ryan Tracy. Ryan Tracy is an entrepreneur with his own product just recently released. He uh, has featured on shows such as Blue Peter, Britain's Got Talent, The Amazing uh, Ninja Warrior and he's a professional balloon modeler and most importantly he is the fastest balloon modeler in the world. So Ryan, welcome on the show. Uh, Thank you. So quick question, tell us how many kids you've got, how old are they? Uh, and how do you explain to your kids what you do? Um, first and foremost, thanks for having me on the show, Ryan. It's a real pleasure to be here. Um, I really love what you do, um, and it's a great opportunity to talk today. So in relation to myself, I have six kids, which is um, <laughs> a lot. They're stacking up. I'm getting closer six to my... Kids? Yeah, it's quite a lot. It's getting closer to my magical number seven, but my eldest daughter just turned 17, so I've been having kids for a while. I've been doing this get up and dad thing for a while, you know, so I'm, I'm not new to it. Um, so yeah, my eldest is 17, Aoife, and then I have a 12-year-old, Rebecca. I have a 10-year-old, Amy, a 6-year-old, Matthew, a 3-year-old, Jessica, and a 4-and-a-half-month-old, old, uh, Brandon, yeah, so... Two boys, four girls. Hey, we're we're leveling up the playing field, but we've we better way to go, you know. Yeah. So oh, why? So I mean, how do you explain to your kids, you know, what you do, what your job is, and what what, what you how you're working and stuff? I it's, it's it's the way I explain to my kids what I do in relation to balloons is really easy to translate them because they remember from the outset why I started making balloons and it was to entertain them. And then that transitioned to me entertaining lots of other kids. Um, so it's easy for me to say to them, um, they would say, Daddy, um, what are you doing today? And I say, well, I'm going to work. And I say, which work are you going to? Mm. And I say, well, I'm not going to my work on the council. I'm going to my work um, making balloons and, and making kids smile and making them happy, you know. So it's, it's easy to, to say to them that because they've seen me in those environments where they're at events and I'm at events and I'm making balloons and they can see that interaction and what I do. So they kind of understand it, you know, and um, they get it. And I've been at their, their friends' parties and they've been, um, their friends have been at the parties in our house where I'm making balloons as well. So they get it and they understand it. Um, so it's, it's kind of easy for me to, to put across, but at the same time, um, there's not too many kids have a father who dress up in a suit like this and head out to work, you know, so it's a, there's a and wee do bit they, do of... They, do they like the suits, do they? Yeah, they do, they do, and, and I mean, whenever I buy a new suit, I'll put it on, and the first thing I do is say, what do you think of it? And I'll get the honest reaction from my kids. Kids are very honest, they don't, they don't hide their opinions or what oh, they know, feel and think, which is great, you know, but yeah, they do, they like the suits, and to be honest with you, um, the suits is a big thing for me, because they need to be fun, they need to be engaged, mm -hmm. they need to be interactive, and I'll tell you how much they like the suits, is that, um, you probably can't see it right here on the phone, but on this phone, on the back of my phone, there's a photograph of my wee man, Matthew, this is about two years ago, after I was in Britain's Got Talent, uh, you, the Apple suits, where I buy my suits online, released kid suits, so I bought Brilliant. the same one for Matthew, and Matthew Ward, and you know, just recently they had world book day in his school oh yeah and he went dressed as me Brilliant. from britain's got Brilliant. talent and he brought in the guinness book of records man why don't you release a book <laughs> <laughs> it's on my to-do list <laughs> i'm writing a kid's book at the minute okay really yeah are we going to get some info on that Can well you tell us some secrets or yeah do you know what's it's it's a kid's picture book uh, i'm writing it at the minute um it's going to be in probably at three to six year olds and it's going Brilliant. to um it's going to tell uh, a story through the medium of a balloon dog that has a special name. Um, exclusively, I'm going to relate it now. It's called Duff the Balloon Dog. Oh. And it's going to be the adventures of Duff the Balloon Dog. And there's going to be lots of fun, cool stuff within okay. the book, you know. But And there's going to be some messages in there, some subtle messages, but just stuff about life. and Awesome. You know, yeah, awesome. So big, big stuff. So... Uh, your company's called Duff Balloons. It is. Where did that name come from? Yeah, well, I suppose my nickname is Duff. You know what's interesting is actually um, sometimes when people look at my um, they look at my my brand and stuff together and they go, "Oh, you're Puff Balloons. That makes sense." And I go, no, it's not Puff. It's not Puff. Puff. It's definitely Duff. So Duff is my nickname. Duff's always been my nickname um, my whole life, and my, the people that I grew up with in, in Oma call me Duff. Um, I used to have that. My surname used to be Duffield. Ryan. I used to be Ryan Duffield. Um, and I changed my name to Tracy. 
um, which is my mother's maiden name. So Duff was always my nickname. And whenever I changed my name back to Tracy, I always wanted, oh, people, whenever I moved back to Oma from being away for a while, people always go, yeah, still foot's a crack. And I was like, oh, hey, that's still my nickname. Because um, yeah. people uh, that I met in college and met um, after I left Oma didn't really know that. So when I'm back to Oma, I was like, oh, I had Duff still my nickname. And you know what? Whenever I set up my brand and set up my company, I wanted to, um, I needed something that was unique that people okay. could have. And actually Duff is short. It's easy to say for yeah, kids that can grasp, but like, you know, but what's interesting is my brand is really strong now around where I'm from, certainly. And whenever people see me, they go, don't say, oh, there's Ryan or anything like that. They say, there's Duff Balloons. So I think kids think my surname is Balloons. <laughs> 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 there's Duff Balloons. <laughs> no, your brand does, it really, it really stands out. And see now when I see you on social media, you can just spot it on right away. Yeah. Uh, so for me, it works really well. Right, I'm you. seeing that now. So what's your favorite get up and dad thing to do with the kids so i mean what's the thing that, right let's just go do stuff today what do you do do you know um it can be a multitude of things it can be a, i have some things that i really like doing but i think one of the biggest things that i like doing with my kids is i have a degree in technology and design and i have a master's in design i love making things i love work on my hands i love my kids and um, getting involved in that and i love letting them um, lead me in a direction that they want to go in. So we do a lot of projects where we make stuff. Um, so we do a lot of that. Um, and recently there, this summer, um, we built a tree house. And we awesome. talked about it for years, man. Okay. And, and I actually said to my kids at the start of summer, my summers are pretty hectic with work um, mm -hmm. between my nine to five and between the balloon modeling work. So I have to kind of try and cram in a lot of stuff in a short space of time, which yeah. can be difficult. But I said to them at the start of the summer, I says, what do you guys want to do this summer? What's a big thing? What's a big project? And he says, can we build the tree house you talked about? And I was like, yeah, we can. Okay. So um, we had one tree on where we live, which is kind of semi-established that we had to build it on. And we started building the tree house. And do you know what? I sat, because of the way I am and because of the way I've been trained and stuff like that, first thing I done was sat down and says, right, we need a plan. Okay. So we sat down and we drew plans of the tree house and we drew what they wanted to do and stuff like that and they just let their creativity run wild. And then we went into, how do we go about doing this? So we had them out and we, and we got the wood and we cut it up and we were, I let them do as much as I could, you know, obviously health and safety, but all the rest was involved. But at the same time, risk assessment. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Dad risk assessment. Dynamic risk <laughs> assessment. <laughs> so yeah, you know, I like my kids to get involved, you know, and I want them. The important thing about that is I didn't want to go out and build them a tree house. Mm -hmm. They had to be involved in building the tree house because then they look at and go, I did that. I know. It's a I know it totally is. I mean, I did there something there recently with uh, my oldest, and it was bringing them in and just installing a toilet roll holder into the stuff. Yeah. Now, I mean, I just seen that man's awesome. But even when you're doing that, I mean, like a tree house is a wee bit more bigger than <laughs> installing a, a toilet roll holder. But in terms of health and safety, I was going. I really hope he doesn't slip with this drill here. Yeah. I mean, because this could yeah. just go. This could go all wrong. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Cut that bit out. I know. I know. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 it, you know. Okay. But at the same time, you can't wrap them in bubble wrap, man. We're know, intelligent I enough know. and we're responsible enough to let them, as long as you're supervised, as long as you're helping them. Like the stuff we did in that treehouse, we put this, we built this treehouse. First of all, I read a lot of stuff about building treehouses for a long time and I re researched it about how to do it right because if I'm doing something, I want to do it right. Um, and it said it's going to take about 70 hours minimum to build a treehouse. And I went, Set up 70 hours? 70 hours, man. Okay. And I went, I'll have it up in two, right? <laughs> 90 hours in, like... Genuinely, I was spending days and nights. I was out with a flashlight at night building this thing. Right, okay. And I was 90 hours in, and I was all, that 70 hours looks sweet at the moment. Have you any, have you any pictures of the, the treehouse? I, I probably do have some pictures, okay. yeah, that I, can, that I can share with you, yeah. But um, we built the treehouse, and then uh, we built it. We actually had a, a, a toy house in the garden that was a two-story toy house that they never went into. Mm -hmm. And I says to my wife, I says, I'm going to put that in a tree. She says, good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> so it did. I put it okay. in the tree, built a big base, and we built a balcony out the front of it and a zip line that goes off the front. Okay, so this tree, this tree house has a zip line. It has a zip line. Where does the zip line go to? The zip line goes down a lane. So it goes down okay. a lane. It goes down a lane that's <laughs> the, a purpose-built lane made out of pallets and tires that they fly down on, right? Right, okay. But in order to get up to the zip line, 
they have um, we had to build a bridge across a lane to get to the tree so we have a okay, bridge we, we're gonna have to see it we'll have to see a photo of this <laughs> and he sent me over it so we can we can yeah, post well, this man. on yeah, yeah it's, it's a big project like yeah so uh, what are you highly interested in right now what's the type of what what type of thing is really giving you a buzz right now um, I suppose it comes back to the concept again of what we're talking about here in addition to Get Up and Dad. I am a, a big fan of what you do. <clears throat> the big thing for me about the minute is um, that I'm highly interested in, is in the ethos of Getting Up and Dad because I actually have recognised recently that um, I want to spend more time with my kids as much okay. as I can and I know how special um, it is to find that space and spend with them. So the big thing I'm doing at the minute is I'm learning magic. So you learn magic. I've been right. learning magic for a couple of months now. Okay. I have a, a mentor who's who's helped me along the way. Um, I've bought a lot of magic props and I'm right. playing. Okay. I'm playing about with them. <laughs> and I'm, again, my kids are the test audience. So whilst five years ago when I was making balloons, my kids' eyes light up or lit up, and they still light up whenever they see some of the stuff that we've been making recently, like uh, twenty foot Einsteins and stuff out of balloons. My kids still go wow. But now with magic. Um, because in the context of magic, you, you learn magic, obviously. Um, but for me, the, the, the good attributes of a magician are to have um, charisma and personality and be able to entertain and be able to engage people. And I feel like I've already honed that and I'm quite mm -hmm. good at that. So the magic thing is just, it's actually a lot e it's easier than balloons, man. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, do you know what, you know what the, the difficult thing is? That magic has always been up there. Yeah. People have always went, magic is the business. Like, and see balloons, and we were their poor cousin, man. I, I, I've brought balloons up a bit. I've, mm -hmm. I've, I've pushed the boundaries of balloons and brought it to somewhere where I don't think anyone else ever has brought it. Um, but magic is i'm going to tap into that a bit but i'll okay. never go too far have you did any yet have you have you brought it out and practiced it and oh yeah show, yeah you? i've done a few okay. i've done how you, how, how's the feedback coming from that then? Uh, feedback's really yeah. good but okay. you know what it's a bit like um i've only shown it to my kids and mm -hmm. my wife and stuff like that and actually <clears throat> it's it's a bit like i've done over five and a half thousand hours um balloon modeling now okay <clears throat> pardon me i've done over five and a half thousand hours balloon modeling now and i feel that I have to invest time in magic to get it right. I wouldn't want to do one magic trick in front of anyone, okay. um, and even my own kids, and more, most importantly, my own kids, and for them to go, it's not really magic. Well, I, you know, yeah, so I know you, you have, to, you have to have, have, to have it, it down. Especially like. where you're at now with the balloons. You, yeah. you really want to make sure you nail it. Yeah. You were saying there, uh, just so people have a concept of what you, you actually do, yeah. you said there, about a 20 foot Einstein, what's that? So um, recently we were commissioned by the Northern Ireland Science Festival to build uh, two mega balloon sculptures for their festival, um, one in Foilside and one in Castlecourt. And in uh, Foilside, my friend um, Darren Mortaboy and I built um, a balloon model Einstein, which was about 20 foot tall, it was made out of over a thousand balloons. So you have to weave the balloons together and it's, a, it's okay. actually a feat of engineering. But whenever we finished it, people marveled at it for two weeks. You know, people came awesome. from afar to come and get a photograph with it, you know? And like, I mean, how long did it take you to build something like that and how much plan is involved? Surely that's a, that's like a design job on its own. It's a, it's a big project, but you know, um, it's all about confidence. It's all about confidence and vision. And, and thankfully, um, working with Darren, I'm the fastest blue model in the world, um, officially with three against world records. Um, but Darren Mortaboy is actually, he, he goes by the name Mr. Twister Balloons, and mm -hmm. you can get him on social media. But Darren is a local guy, actually lives in Dramara, but Darren is actually lighting up across the globe Darren travels the globe teaching the best balloon modelers in the world how to make stuff. This guy yeah. is amazing. Like, so to work with Darren's great. So Darren is the vision. We talk about the concept. We talk about what we want to build. And then we think about how do we go about doing that. And you know what? It's a bit of um, suck it and see. It's a bit of have a go and see how it goes. And okay. the, the thing is about balloons, if, if you don't feel like you're getting it right, you can re-engineer it, you know, you can pop some balloons and restructure it and stuff like that. But I have to say that um, we, we kind of hit the nail on the head. We were time constrained in this one because we only had two days per build. And okay. We worked hard, long days. Like I, I, I was so happy with what we'd done in relation to the balloon Einstein because it was, it was fantastic. Um, but whenever we finished the second day and we were walking away from it and I looked back, I kind of had no feeling for it because it was like, you sucked the energy out of me, yeah. Al Einstein there, like, you know, we would, I still we were proud of it, but at the same time, I was like, I was so fatigued, I was like, oh, it was tough work, yeah. like, so balloon modeling's not that easy, like. 
Yeah, I mean, I can imagine, you know, with your hands and stuff and going every day, constantly having mm. to move and then pump, like, surely your arms must be... Yeah, like, big biceps. Pump, big <laughs> <guy>. <laughs> no, do you know what it is? Um, and and kind of with balloon modeling, right, you do a lot of stuff with your fingers. You twist mainly with your right hand, so it's your right wrist that gets um, most of the stuff. But, but actually, your fingers are controlled right up your arm by your tens, and your tens is where it can tend tend to get sore mm -hmm. but but that's that's where you need to be careful but at the same time like i've i've twisted like them those days we twisted thousands of balloons you know and it was fine it's grand it's more the kind of fatigue of always standing up and okay. always kind of moving and stuff like that my fitbit was going mad i think i had about thirty thousand steps on it you know but the, the important thing about it is um I can do balloon modeling, like if I'm doing more records or making balloons at parties and stuff like that, I don't even have to look, I can do it blindfolded behind my back. See, whenever you're doing mega sculptures and you're doing something that, that no one's done before, you have to be switched on. Mm -hmm. Every minute, every, every twist that you make is important to that entire project. Yeah. So you have to be really switched on and you can't switch off. And that's where it kind of drains you a bit, you know. So I uh, big builds, you know what, but uh, the, there's no one in that, there's no one in, in Ireland um, that can build what we build. So yeah. we're quite I unique. can imagine, you know, uh, especially when you're under a, a time constraint and mm -hmm. you have to I like that. get it done within that amount, something so big as well. There's loads going on. I mean, you're involved with, uh, you've been involved in loads of TV programs. You've been, yeah. uh, you're doing loads of different things in terms of work. How do you how do you manage that work dad balance? How how do how do you do that? Yeah, it's tricky. It is. It's, it's a difficult thing. It's probably one of the most um, difficult things that I do in the context of managing my time. You know, but um, listen, first and foremost, I think my ambition in life was always, and will be always to be a father and to be a good father to my children. And that's what I set out in life to do. I said for early doors, like, and I, like see my, I'm ambitious now, I'm still ambitious. I feel like I've got a lot to offer, but when I was younger and the world was my oyster, I said that my biggest ambition was to have a family and live in the house in the country. Done that, box ticked. Is that enough? No, because for the rest of my life, I need to be the best father I can be to my children. How do I be the best father? I need to teach my kids that in this life you have to work to get. You have to. I have to work to provide. Um, we have six children, as I said. Um, my wife hasn't worked in a couple of years. She can't work. She has to be at home with the kids. My wife is a far more difficult job than I'll ever have, no matter what I do. So my wife is at home, and she's the backbone of our family, and she she's there, and I have to go out and I have to provide for our family. Not bringing it back to caveman stuff, you know. What I mean, I don't have to go out and like fish and stuff like that. But it's a bit similar. You do you have to go out and provide. You can't have six children and not provide for them, you know. So I do what I do in my work is to, is to provide for my children. Luckily enough, um, I have I have two main things. I have my core job that I do during the day, and then I have my business. Um, my core job is very serious. I'm a performance improvement officer for local government. It's backed up by all the academia I've done, all the experience I've done over the last 15 years in local government, and a lot of success in doing that. But my creativity comes into my business, and it's where I have fun. Um, and sometimes, uh, you know, with Duff Balloons and with what I've done and pushing the boundaries um, by way of a kind of business model as a children's entertainment company, um, it's given me the opportunity um, to do so much. So um, actually intrinsic within my business is the core belief that I want to inspire children to be whatever they want to be. And I want to bring a bit of positivity and joy and enlightenment into people's lives, and especially children. Um, parents, um, I, I, I'm interested in parents too and, and, and what they do and how they interact with their kids, but my main focus is give that child, within that small space of time, is to give that child that best positive experience that I can give them. And to be honest with you, like I said this on Britain's Got Talent as well, <coughs> is that um, I, I want to um, change the world one smile at a time. I mean, it's very cheesy and it's a big ambitious kind of thing, but you know what? In the last two years, I've reached over 50 million people globally through what I've done Brilliant. with a balloon modeling kit. So it's insane what you can do, you know, but for me um, as a male in society, <coughs> Um, there's a lot of, of males that are maybe not presenting as being very positive and there's a lot of kind of bad things that go on in, in the context of, of kind of, you know, you know, male role models and stuff like that. I feel that we need more male role models and I feel that we need to be um, more supportive towards our families, more supportive towards our communities. And I feel that 
um, people like us, Ryan, step up and do that. And I think we need to step up and do it, you know, because we've got a we've got a heck of a bad name, and we gotta we gotta p make people understand that um, we've got a lot to contribute, you know, and we're prepared to work hard at, it and we're prepared to inspire. But the the, ins the inspirational thing to me is something that I always wanted to be inspirational, but because when I was younger, people say who inspired you. And I can't think of anyone yeah. that really inspired me. And now I have role models. Of, of, I love Lewis Hamilton. I love people. I love, you know, um, uh, different people in, in the sporting world and stuff like that. But when I was younger, I struggled with someone who, I, who inspired yeah. me. So I made a decision when I was younger that the person that was going to inspire me most was myself. Yeah. I wanted to become the person that people could be inspired by, if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, like, I once heard a quote, uh, you don't take a job, you make a job. Yeah. I mean, if something's not out there for you, yeah, make it up yourself, you know? Well, I kind of did that, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, a lot of things don't exist yet. You know, jump into that, yeah. what you want, you know? Yeah. What you're saying is there's no breakdance in blue models? Well, there is no breakdance in blue models. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you said there's something like, you've reached 50 million people. Yeah. Uh, how have you did that and what has been most difficult? Most difficult? Difficult. difficult. <laughs> go That's check a out new his, word. Go check out his uh, balloon tutorials and you'll see the difficult why that's there. <laughs> yeah, niche reference there, but people will get it. Oh, why? Um, what was the question? I mean, you've, you've, you've hit uh, 50 million oh, people. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what have you found most difficult? <laughs> hey, I suppose the, the, the most... Uh, the, the, the most difficult part of um, reaching that many people Sorry, was it, it is now, it is it? you just want to say it all the time now after uh, that shoot I was saying <laughs> I was saying difficult in meetings and it's quite difficult to say it is quite difficult <laughs> I mean, it's hard to remember how to say difficult <laughs> yeah do you know what the, the big thing about that is that you, you have some control over it but you don't have a lot of control over it so I feel certainly that I was quite lucky to have had the reach that I had. Like, listen, my uh, YouTube edition on Britain's Got Talent was trending in countries that I never knew existed at, at times. I was watching it online and it was reaching maybe 50, 60,000 views per day and I had no idea what was going on or how I was doing, so it was completely out of my control and I didn't upload the video. It wasn't even Britain's Got Talent main channel that uploaded that. It was a, 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 a company called uh, Music Talent Now that had uploaded the video as well as BGT and it, it, it went viral, you know, around the mm -hmm. world. So it, it's actually had over 15 million views um, uh, you know, with the minutes. So the big thing for me was BGT really launched me and BGT okay. happened um, because they couldn't find a magician. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so they had, they had auditions in Oma, which is Oma is a wee small place, like, and um, they had auditions in Oma and uh, the, the people that, they went to the Street Arts Centre, right, to our auditions, which is their traditional method of finding talent. And then they decided to go to an open mic night right, at, a okay. local, at a local bar, right? You were going to an open mic night? No, no, I wasn't to going anywhere near. At this stage, I had, I had no interest in auditioning for Britain's Got Talent. Uh -huh. I had never been on a talent <clears throat> show in my life. Okay. I had done balloons because I was interested in it, and I just happened to set up a business in it, and it was going quite well. And then the next thing was um, I got this phone call from a person I knew and said, listen, we're having an open mic night. Britain's Got Talent are going to come along. Um, is there any chance that you could come along? And I said, okay, yeah, what, what do you want me to do? And they were like, oh, we're raising money for a charity. So could you come along and like make balloons? And I was like, yeah, I can come along and make balloons. And he says, yeah, we can't find a magician. And I was all, all right, okay, cool. I says, I don't do magic, by the way. And he says, no, I just come along and make a lock of balloons. And I says, okay, no problem. He says, oh, by the way, we don't have any money to pay you or nothing. So you just come along for the crack. And at that time, I was trying to build my business. And I was, my, my time was kind of... My, my time was precious, obviously, with my kids and stuff, and I was kind of, I, I, I wanted to do some stuff um, by way of doing stuff for free, but I didn't want to do a lot of stuff because it didn't make a lot of sense, and my time is so limited. So anyway, I agreed to go along because Britain's Got Talent there, and I thought it would be interesting. And then I walked into the bar um, Tuesday night at 9 o'clock, and I was wearing a suit. I was wearing my Bada Boom suit, and I walked into the bar, and the entire bar just stopped, turned around and looked at me. It was like a movie out of Western High, and I, just, I was just kind of standing there in my suit going, Hey, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Most awkward. You know when you want the yeah. ground to swell you up? Because I was like, there. Like, and everybody looks so they can stop looking. <laughs> yeah. Get comfortable. Okay, everybody's comfortable. 
<laughs> yeah, and then I walked kind of, you know, what when you wear these suits, man, you either you either <clears throat> you either look embarrassed that you're wearing them uh-huh. or you own them. Yeah. So I I, yeah. I choose the latter, right? So I strutted in on them. I said, I was like, yeah, I'm wearing this suit. I'm what? And I went over and kind of awkwardly leaned on the bar <laughs> till the attention went off me. And then um, <laughs> I looked around and I said to the, the girl who had asked me to come along, I says, who, um, there's no kids here. And she was all, yeah, yeah, no one has a who am I making balloons for? And she was like, do I just make a lot of balloons a little bit grand? And I was going, oh my God, I need to go home. Actually, I need to go home. And then the next thing was the scouts from Britain's Got Talent. They were filming people and, and they came over and they said, I really like your suit. And I said, oh, thanks very much. And I says, are you here to audition? And I says, absolutely not. And I says, oh, they said, go on, go up on stage and make a lot of balloons. And I says, no, no, that's not really what I do. Like, I'm not really that interested in that. And then I turned around then and I said, you know what? Let me think about it. And I'm always, I'm always open for opportunities. So I, I had to think about it. And to be fair, I had always wanted to attempt a world record, okay. but I had never tried it before that night. And I knew that this was my opportunity. Maybe, maybe I never envisaged what would come, but I said, do you know what? Let's try a world record. And so we'd done that and they filmed it. And then after, and the whole bar went nuts. Like I had this guy yeah. on the side of my shoulders and all. And I was like, what is going on here? This is, this okay. is, this is interesting. But people really got into it. And then they interviewed me after for about 10 minutes, asked me, what would you make for the queen? And what would you make for Simon Clown? I was going, this is, I'm just going to roll this. This is cool. Yeah. I'll just answer these questions. And then next thing I get the call back, you know, so that, that was very lucky and Britain's yeah. got talent to have that for, opportunity. For me, what is so amazing is that you've turned something from balloon modeling and then you've turned it into a show. Yeah. And every time I see you perform, yeah. I mean, even just watching the audience, yeah. it's just a complete explosion yeah. of thing. And like even magicians, I've seen magicians go on stage and just not have any response. Yeah. But you've taken something and you've just turned it into this and created so much entertainment value from it. I appreciate it, man. It's it's incredible. I uh, do you know what it's not easy to do, like you know. But do, yeah, you, do, I know, you, know, do I know. you do you know that? Do you see the stuff I do on stage, by the way? Easy peasy. It's the easiest stuff I've ever done in my life. See, whenever I'm in front of children, whether it be one or 50 or 100, and whether I'm in a community hall or a big building or in their front living room, that to me is the most important environment, that Mm. one-to-one space where I want to light up that child's life by by way of entertainment. So the stuff I do on stage just kind of pours out of me naturally, you know, and it's it's very natural for me to do that because it's, I find it a lot easier. But I, bear in mind as well, I've made over a quarter of a million balloons for kids um, over the last couple of years. So it's it's a skill well honed. But at the same time, I don't take it for granted. Mm-hmm. I'm always looking for new ways to engage and entertain and have fun and stuff like that. You know? So I'm constantly feeding off kids and seeing what they're into and what they like and then tweaking how I act to make sure that they have the best experience. And actually... Um, what do you call it? Um, stage work is something that I'm very interested in, and actually, and I've just recently met with someone this week, and we're developing okay. a, a show for stage that we're hoping to tour. So brilliant, brilliant. Mm-hmm. Are you going to let us? Are you going to tell us anything else? Or? Nah, it's early yeah, doors. No, no, it's early no, doors. Okay, but okay, listen, okay. I, I tell you, I tell you what it will involve. It involves me and a very well established comedian going on the road with a with a show that's going to entertain kids and adults. Awesome. And it's going to be unbelievable. Like we've talked about what it's going to be. And we're starting to develop it, and we're gonna we're gonna launch it in Noma this summer, um, and we're doing a photo shoot for it this weekend. So brilliant, brilliant, can't wait, brilliant. Uh, so it's two thousand nineteen. What would you tell yourself pre dad uh, with all the experience you have now? What would you say? What would you tell your now self to pre dad? Do you know what? Um, I spoke to my wife about this, and I was like, "What would I tell young Ryan?" And do you know what? Um. I, w- I don't think I would change a whole lot, but what I would say to my younger self is enjoy it. Yeah. Sometimes it's wild, wild easy to get caught up in the cogs of society and everything turning. And listen, it's not easy being a father. It's not easy being a mother. It's not easy being a parent. It's not easy um, by way financially, physically, emotionally. There's so much going on in your life that you need to keep such a stern focus on what you're doing that you can sometimes forget that all this beauty and enjoyment is in front of your eyes like you know before i came a, a father you know i thought to myself you know this world's got a lot to offer me i'm going to enjoy this you know and stuff like that and then i had my first child and i'm second third and fourth fifth and sixth but whenever whenever i have my kids like 
I was just like, this makes so much sense now. I'm here to make sure that they have a good upbringing and that I can still, I can educate them and I can provide for them and I can be there for them. But at the same time, every moment that I'm around my children, it's just, there's just love, man. It's just, you know, there's no, it's unfiltered love that you get from me. You know, sometimes they'll text you. Yes, that's what yeah. kids are there for, you know. I know, I know. <laughs> So we watched we watched Instant Family recently with Mark okay. Wahlberg, and, and it's a great show, I'll you know. Have to but check that one out. yeah, you should, man. But it's interesting, like. But it's you're just looking at the kids, and you're just going, "Oh, the kids are driving them nuts." Nice and wife. That's nothing compared to what we do with <laughs> a daily basis. Do you know what I mean? On a daily basis, it, but you can you can get caught up in the seriousness of it. You know, yeah. um, I, had, I had a tough time actually a couple of years back in 2015 where I um, I lost my job. And I was looking like we, were, we might have lost the house and everything was starting to go really, really south. And that's when I started and I had the motivation to set up my business in balloon modeling. And back then it was difficult and, and I thought to myself, this is, this is not right. And I had so much pressure, man. And I was just like, I got to make this work. People are depending on me. And things were really serious, and I had to go, and I, I don't know, about 40 interviews inside six months, and I was like, just please, somebody give me a job. And I ended up in, in one of the best jobs I've ever had in my life, um, by way of my 9 to 5 job, but also, it kind of gave me a real kick to go, you are an entrepreneur, you can do things, what are you, you going to do? Are you going to sit around and, and, and be, you know, be annoyed about, um, what do you call it, that the things aren't happening for you, are you going to make it happen? And that was the moment for me that I really, it was kind of like a moment where I just went, just go get it, you know. And I said to my wife, early doors, you know, was in the bloom model at the time and I had loads of business ideas and stuff like that. But I said to her, I said, if I can make a success out of balloon modeling, I can make a success out of anything. And I think I've, um, I'm not finished with balloon modeling, by the way. I know I'm dabbling in magic, but I ain't, I'm only starting to push the boundaries of this thing because I've got so much that I want to do with it. But at the same time, at, with, with the stuff that happened a couple of years ago and with the way things are in life, you know, always like, you know, the, the, the challenges that you have in life and the, and the difficulties you have, the, um, it's very easy to get caught up in it and go um, kind of and be very serious about it. Yeah. You have to enjoy it. I enjoy it all the time. Like, you know, sometimes and, you know, one of the biggest things for me about lots of things can happen in your life that you can't control. OK, but you can control how you feel about it. And now it doesn't matter what happens to me. I just smile, man, and just, it's like the penguins of Madagascar, I just smile and wave. You know, I just kinda, I just let it go because I can choose how I feel about it. The bad things can happen all the time. I used to bust a tire in a car and go nuts and go out and fall out with the tire and kick it and stuff. See, now when it, when it busts, I just laugh, man. I go, that's, that's all right. Just Remember? a balloon bursting. Yeah, do you know what I mean? <laughs> but I don't know what I mean, but it is. But you know what? We, I think sometimes we have to just accept that, you know, um, th there's gonna be stuff in life that's not easy. But you know what? It's important. It's important to know what it feels like when things are difficult. Because then whenever things are good, you will appreciate them. And I can tell you, I am very appreciative of the things that have went right in my life, you know. So for me, it's about, as an adult, um, <laughs> it's a bit like um, I, um, what do you call it? For me, I'm almost pretending like I'm an adult. I'm a very good adult, right? I'm a very good adult, and I'm well skilled, and I've I've spent a lifetime in academia, and I'm very good in the context of my family and all the rest. But I feel like sometimes I pretend to society that I'm an adult just so that I can be accepted, whilst I'm a big kid, and I don't really hide that very well. We're all big kids, well, some, yeah. at some level. Yeah, you, you are, you know. And sometimes you have to you have to figure out where you where you belong, but don't get caught up and figuring out so much where you belong because sometimes people just don't belong in a certain area or you can't be put in a certain box. I tried to belong to a lot of things in my life and spent, expanded a, 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 like such an immense amount of energy trying to belong to a lot of different things. And, and my family, we moved um, a lot when we were younger and we moved around different communities and I played for different um, teams and stuff like that. And it was very difficult because you don't get consistent friends. You don't really belong to any one community. And I found it very, very difficult. And even now, you, 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 you opened this, or you talked about in this podcast that I'm a professional balloon modeler. Um, I would see myself as an amateur balloon modeler. Um, because Definitely, the, not. <laughs> Definitely not. But you know what's interesting about that, Ryan, is I don't, I'm not really accepted in the world of balloon modeling. And see, see professional balloon modelers, mm -hmm. they don't really give me any kudos because 
I've done something different with it and yeah. they wouldn't really, I don't know whether they, they wouldn't rate me or whatever, but it's just interesting because I'm not, I'm not really accepted and that, and that's fine. It's okay because I don't need to fit into everything, but mm -hmm. understand that it's okay not to fit in yeah. is, is a big thing, you know? You just have to do your own thing. You do. You know, and if people have a problem with that, people have a problem with it. It's yeah, no yeah, bring it on. Oh, I <laughs> okay, what's the future holding for you? Well, I suppose at the minute I've kind of been doing a bit of uh, motivational speaking, um, which is kind of a bit strange because I never really seen myself as a motivational or inspirational kind of person, but I kind of just found myself in that space where people were saying to me, would you do a, a talk like that? And, and I'm done the first talk and it would, went down brilliant and, and people loved it, you know, and I was doing it for different audiences. I've done it actually in my local primary school for my kids and, and that, in this context of that, imagine how embarrassed they were with their dad standing up there, but I didn't care because part of being a dad's been embarrassing. That's it. That's it. <laughs> you know, and then um, I've done it with um, uh, with local schools, kind of third and fourth year with entrepreneurs talking to them about. So right. I talk about my story. I talk about um, my past. I talk about how I became a balloon mother. I talk about my academia, my interests and my achievements. And I also talk about the, the like the hardships. I also talk about the fact that it wasn't always easy and you have to stick in there and you have to be committed. But I love doing that type of speaking, you know, and I'm going to be doing a lot more of it. Um, but I didn't, I didn't ever really think again that I was an inspirational character. But you know, it, it really kind of found like found home with me one day whenever I was, um, I was actually I was in Bear and I was going to the shop where I live and I got out and my bada boom suit and I was walking across the street and I was going into the shop and um, I could see these group of young people um, standing outside the shop. And they were looking at me really kind of dodgily. And I thought, oh, jeepers, what's going on here? And I thought, oh, they're obviously looking at me and they're, they're thinking, oh, he's a idiot, like. So anyway, doing as I do, owned the suit, walked across, strutted into the shop, got my milk and bread or whatever I was getting. And I came walking out the front of the shop and one of the guys started walking towards me. And I thought, oh, jeepers, are they going to start me? Is this, a, is this a fight situation? Because... Mm. I'm ready for a fight. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, the lad came over like really dodgy, dodgy and stuff like that here. And as he got close to me, I thought, right, let's go. And he stuck out his hand and he shook my hand. And I says, all right, lad, what's the crack? And he says, here, are you that guy? And I says, what guy? And he says, are you the guy that has the Guinness World Records? And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's me. And he said, well, could I, could I get a photograph of you? And I was like, Brilliant. whoa. So anyway, I give him a chance. start the fight to... What about it was <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, how the words change, man. It's changed for the good. But it's funny because I give him my, I give him my jacket, man, and he put on my jacket, and we got a photograph together, and I, that was the end of it, like you know. And I, Brilliant. and I got under my car and went home, and I felt a wee bit good about it, you know. Um, but then the next thing was my daughter, who was like uh, fifteen at the time. Imagine how embarrassing I am to a fifteen-year-old. Like I love it. <laughs> I live for that, you know. But I, I do, I did feel for my kids a wee bit. I thought. I gotta make this so cool that it's okay for them. And I hope I did that. But anyway, this young fella posted down on Instagram and he put up a photograph of me and he said, um, it's not every day you meet a Guinness World Record holder. Uh -huh. And you know what? I put after it then, um, be somebody nobody thought you could be. Brilliant. And do you know what? I, I, didn't even, I didn't see this, right? But, and I didn't realize that kind of reach, but my daughter screenshotted it and sent to me and says, look daddy, and, and this fellow was in his young 20s, uh, his early 20s, he's a young fella, um, but my daughter kind of looked up to him. Um, and so for her seeing that, made it cool and okay for me to be yeah. okay, you know? Awesome. So it was kind of that acceptance and stuff, you know? So it was, it was important and that kind of made me realize, it kind of thought, well, you know what? I do have a story to tell. I have worked hard. I have learned a lot and I would like to share that. And I've done a, 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 a few, kind of motivational speaking events recently. And do you know what? See, when I left the room, people were like hugging me and high five me and stuff. And I was kind of going, jeepers, I just shared my story. Like, you know, but it really resonated with people and it really kind of give people that kind of get up and go and, and stuff, you know? So it, it, I just, you know what? I was kind of going, I feel really good after that because I, I got to influence some people potentially, you know, and or give them something that, that could maybe help them. And it's kind of born out of Ryan that I, I, because of my work, and because I've done a lot of youth work as well um, throughout my time. Um, and I always, I listened to speakers a lot and I thought, what are they offering to this room? What are they, what, what's that, what's the golden nuggets? What are people taking out away from this and stuff? And I've thought about it for a long time. So whenever I speak and whenever I engage, I try and um, 
do the best I can so that people walk out of that room and at some stage maybe in their life they might look back and go, do you know what, I listened to this guy once and he kind of made me, because I had that in my life. When I was uh, 16, I was um, not an upstanding citizen. I was fighting a lot, I was drinking, I was in a bad place in my life and I needed a bit of direction. And I actually went to a placement in a local um, special school called Cranny Special School. And I went to a placement there with my school and I went and I was there for eight weeks. And I seen people who had learning difficulties and they weren't able to talk, communicate or anything, but they were just happy. Mm-hmm. And you know, and the, the, this sense at that stage in my life, I felt really aggrieved by the world and I thought, the society has failed me, it's done me wrong. Like, and I felt like people owed me stuff. And then I went there and I realized the world didn't owe me nothing. And I was just so um, involved and in hating the world and hating everything that that time that I spent there actually inspired me to become a better person. So I met, I met, there's a guy called George, right? And I met George um, before Christmas and it was 20 years nearly to the day since I met him. And I met George and I said to the people that were looking after George, I said, he's my hero. And they says, what do you mean? I says, he, he actually changed my life. I had one person um, and that time that I spent with him completely changed my outlook on life. And ever since that, I've been going in a direction that I wouldn't have went if, if I hadn't been inspired by him, you know. So uh, it's really important to meet people that give you it. But then sometimes you have to be kind of looking for it. You have to be open to, to wanting to absorb mm-hmm. some of that, you know. So, yeah, love that stuff. Let's get up and If you want to check out some more Duff Balloon stuff, head over to DuffBalloons.com. You can also get his links for his Instagram and his Facebook over there. Uh, if you want to hear more stuff like this, hit the subscribe button. Uh, this this podcast is produced by BNL Productions. Uh, go go follow them as well. You'll see a lot of interesting stuff over there. And guys, enjoy the rest of your day.